So we're going to talk about feedback control, and we need to discuss first homeostasis, the definition for our purposes, maintenance of relatively constant conditions. And for the body, this would be things like blood pressure, blood glucose, plasma osmolarity, etc. Now, feedback loops describe the elements involved in maintaining homeostasis. And they're co comprised of, number one, a controlled variable, number two, sensor, number three, a comparing unit that can see what's going on, number four, a controller that can change things. Now, all of these elements, there's relationships between them that can be illustrated by a positive sign, which means if you increase one element, the other element goes up, or if you decrease one element, the element goes down. This is called a direct relationship. A negative sign is the opposite. Increase causes a decrease, or decrease causes an increase, and that's called an indirect relationship. Now, the gain is the strength of a loop on the controlled variable, and that is going to be something that you can consider when there's multiple loops. Let's take a look at an example number one here. We have the air temperature is the controlled variable, thermometer is the sensor, thermostat comparing unit, and furnace is the controller. What would happen when the air temperature is low from some outside disturbance? Well, impinge on the air temperature, that would go down, and the controlled variable going down, we need to look at the different relationships. We can draw them in in this loop, and we can see that if air temperature goes down, then the thermometer is going to sense a decrease in temperature. And if the temperature sensed by the thermometer goes down, this negative sign means that there's going to be an increase in what the thermostat's going to record in terms of the deviation from the set point. And because there's a positive relationship, the furnace will go get turned on. That would increase the air temperature back towards normal. And that would help try to stabilize the air temperature. Now, when we're talking about feedback loops, the example we just saw is an example of a negative feedback loop. There's an odd number of inversions, negative signs, in any given loop. And if you multiply all of them together, you get a negative feedback. Positive feedback is the opposite. The even number of inversions results in, when you multiply them together, you get a positive value. Now, negative feedback loops stabilize the controlled variable, and positive feedbacks are destabilizing. And in the example of the furnace that we just looked at, that was an example of negative feedback because the air temperature went down, yet the feedback loop tried to bring the temperature back up towards that set point to stabilize the air temperature. If it was a positive feedback loop, then what would happen is if the air temperature went down, then the change would make the air temperature further go down, and it would be kind of like um, a vicious cycle, uh, continuing to have the air temperature continue to go in that direction. Most feedback loops in the body are negative feedback. They're stabilizing. There are some examples of positive feedback that we'll discuss later that um, are also very important, but by and large, negative feedback is mostly what you see in the body. Now, we have example number two here where we have multiple organs and boxes, organ A, B, C, D, and e, F, and those organs make hormones A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, it's important to recognize for hormones, they're gonna be acting on receptors, and I'm gonna draw in the receptors for the respective hormones. You can see that they're located on where they're going to. So we're putting in uh, hormones A, B, C, D, and E receptors. Notice on organ F, there's two receptors because there's two hormones acting on it, and there's finally um, hormone F receptor. So how many loops do you see? Well, if we look at this first loop, that's loop number one, and if we count the number of inversions, there's three inversions, so there's an odd number, it's overall negative feedback. There's another loop buried in here, that's called loop number two in this case, and there's three inversions, and it's also negative feedback. So overall, this is negative feedback. 
if the loops were different, one was positive and one was negative, we would really need to know the gain, the strength of the individual loops to know overall what the feedback loop overall would be doing. Now let's take a look at the kind of problem that we would um, face um, with disturbances in this feedback loop. We have the different levels of the hormones and there's the loop again, kind of miniaturized. And there's so many examples of disturbances that could occur in a loop like this. There could be damage to an organ. There could be a tumor making uncontrolled amounts of hormones. There could be receptor de disturbances with drugs that stimulate or block or mutations. So many possibilities. Important to recognize that you need to know where to start. You need to figure out first where the disturbance is originating. And that is gonna be based on the scenario. The second thing that you should keep in mind is that check if your answer makes sense. If it's negative feedback, you should have a response that's stabilizing the disturbance. And that's easy to do once you work out the scenario. So let's take a look at some examples. Let's start with a example of a tumor making excess hormone A. So let's make believe the tumor is an organ A, as an example, and that is making a lot of hormone A. So the disturbance is gonna start with hormone A being high. That's our starting point. Once we decide that, we don't change the answer. That's the starting point, it's fixed. Now we work out the negative sign there, hormone A goes up, hormone B will go down. Negative sign, hormone B goes down, hormone C goes up. Negative sign again, hormone C goes up, hormone D goes down. And then hormone D goes down, hormone E will go down because of the positive sign. And then if we look at hormone F, the effects of those hormones, hormone F will go down. Now this actually makes sense because hormone F stimulates A and we would want that to go down in a negative feedback system. That would be stabilizing. Let's take a look at another example. A drug that blocks hormone D receptors. Now, there's two different types of receptors in this example. Let's just make believe that it's, it's blocking both those D1 and D2 receptors, okay? It's non-selective drug that's blocking all D receptors. So where would we start? Well, we actually would have to start in the two locations where hormone D receptors are located. So if we go and take a look at where that would be, that would be on organ E and also organ F. So those would be gonna go down and that's where our starting point would be, okay? Now that we've worked that out, if hormone E is going down, hormone F is going down, we can next go to, in our feedback system, A would go down. If A goes down, B goes up because of the negative sign. If B goes up, C goes down because of the negative sign. And then if C goes down, D goes up. And that actually makes sense because we block the receptors for D, so the system is trying to compensate by making more D to try to overcome the drug uh, blocking the receptors for D. So again, it's always good to check your answer and always know where to start. Let's take a look at another example. This is a real life example of the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. This is something that is uh, the feedback control for thyroid hormone. We have TRH released from the hypothalamus on the pituitary, makes thyroid stimulating hormone on the thyroid gland and that makes thyroid hormones, which have effects on the body, and then there's negative feedback. So let's take a look at destruction of those thyroid gland cells that are in this loop. The, the, the problem would be there. So the thyroid hormones would go down, and the thyroid growth would not occur because you've damaged, destroyed the thyroid gland. So our starting point is where that thyroid gland box is, and you can see now that if the thyroid uh, hormones are low, the body effects of the thyroid hormones are gonna be decreased. And then with negative feedback, the negative signs there, you're gonna have an increase in thyrotropin releasing hormone, that's TRH, which is a hormone that we'll discuss later. 
and that going up in also the negative sign on the anterior pituitary, you're going to have an increase in TSH. Another example would be, what if you had an antibody that stimulated the TSH receptor? Now, this is actually a real disorder. This is uh, called Graves' disease, which is a, a very common cause of hyperthyroidism. And we can see that if we wanted to draw in the TSH receptor, we can put that in there and also put the antibody stimulating there. And that would mean that we'd have an increased thyroid hormones and increased thyroid gland growth from the stimulation of the TSH receptor. Now, there'll be more thyroid hormones, so that would go up. And then from the, from the negative sign on TRH and TSH, we'd see that the TSH would go down. Finally, severe iodide deficiency. You need iodide to make and synthesize thyroid hormones. So if you think about where that would start, that would start with hormone synthesis. So hormones would go down, and then you would have less thyroid hormone effects. And then because of the negative sign, you'd have an increase in TSH, and the TSH would stimulate the TSH receptor and cause growth of the thyroid gland. And we'll talk later that this excess growth of the thyroid gland this way is called a diffuse goiter, which will be discussed in another video when we talk about the thyroid axis. So I hope that these examples help you recognize the importance of feedback. And there's many, many systems in the body that have medical significance that you really need to understand how these systems work to predict the levels of hormones in the body changing in response to disturbances and also the changes in physiological processes in the body that respond to disturbances as well.